Amen. God bless everybody. Amen. So glad to see everybody. Praise the Lord. We're just too blessed to stress in the house of God today. Amen. That's right. Too glad to be sad, yeah. too anointed to be disappointed. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord God. So God be praised. God be honored. God be exalted. Right. And we have many needs, but we know God knows all of our needs. He does. Is that right? Yes, sir. And God be praised yes, forevermore. And uh, just praying for everybody. And I'd like to invite you to song number 316. Really appreciated Wednesday night. How many enjoyed that? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise God. I got to do my own sound check here real fast. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, uh, you know, the word of God can't be stopped. Whenever the Lord Jesus was hanging up on that cross, bleeding and dying, everybody thought, well, that was it. But it wasn't it. You can't stop the word of God. God's children have a resurrection. Brother Brown said everything that serves a purpose for God has a resurrection. Amen. Amen. So when you're in the will of God and you're in the service of God and you serve a purpose for God, you will have a resurrection. Amen. Amen. That's right. So God bless everybody. Let's go to 316. <coughs> Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Amen. Yes, Lord. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. dwelling place for our Lord. Yes, Amen. Lord. How many agrees with the Word of God? Amen. How many agrees with all the Word of God? God Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord. I'm so happy for the revelation that His fullness has come. Oh, hallelujah. His perfection has That's come. Right. The great dominion, the great might, the Amen. great majesty That's of His true. divine being right. has been unveiled to the end time bride. Glory. The fullness of the Word has been introduced. Hallelujah. The fullness of the Word was foreran by the Elijah ministry, and That's He right. has already introduced the fullness out of heaven. Amen. That's right. And that fullness is anointing an end-time bride. Glory to God. Anointing her unto full redemption. That's right. Anointing her to express God's whole plan of redemption. Amen. Not just having a resurrection in the soul by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is the new birth, but a change in the body. Hallelujah. 
a change in the atoms. Right. Amen. To translate from time to eternity. Amen. To go from one dimension to another. Yes. Amen. Yes. To leave yes. out of this place. That's right. Amen. So we got more and more pressure all the time. Yep. More and more challenges. More and more tests. Right? right? The whole world's under judgment, but the, the bride of Jesus Christ is under grace. Amen. That's right. So just remember our faith today. They're talking about this debt ceiling and how the government might have to, you know, default on its debt. But that's a different system than the system we're in. That's right. The Bible says we've been translated into the kingdom of his son. Amen. We're in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. right? And there is no debt ceiling to be raised in that kingdom. That's right. We're under a totally different headship Hallelujah. than the headship of this world. That's right. Does everybody understand how when the bride goes up, Satan's going to be kicked out, yes. take his place in that man of sin, yes, sir. and the whole world will be under the headship of that incarnate beast. That's right. But the true bride of Jesus Christ is under the headship of Christ himself. Glory to God. God Almighty made manifest in fullness. That's right. The full expression of the Almighty. And that's where you have to see yourself. That's you have to see yourself called out from under the headship of the world system and brought under the headship of Jesus Christ himself. Amen. And over right. there, all of our debts are paid. That's right. We're not in debt. Amen. Right? The world is in debt, but we cannot be accounted as being in debt That's when right. the blood has purchased all Amen. things for us. Lord. Is that right? right. <clears throat> so number two, amazing grace today. Hallelujah. Appreciate my son stepping up and, and sister uh, Esther helping us out today. Amen. God bless our precious brothers and, brother and sister, and, and God be with everybody. There's an onslaught and an attack, but we know the grace of God is sufficient for us. Amen. Right. The Lord Jesus Christ reached down and touch and heal and deliver everyone that has need in their body today. Right, Amen. Amen. Right. Amazing grace, number two. You, it is amazing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh,
Amazing is His grace today. Hallelujah. Let's go to song number 22. Praise God. Before we do, let's just offer some prayer. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Victory in Jesus today. That was a little high, wasn't it, son? I, I couldn't catch that key, brother. So uh, we're going to go to song 22. And we're going to have a great time in the word of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, as we just enter in today, we thank oh, you for your atmosphere, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you for catching us up into heavenly places, Lord. Amen. Your spirit is with us wherever we go, whatever condition we're in. Thank you, Lord, Lord God, your grace is sufficient, Father. We just come to you, Lord, making prayer, intercession, and supplication. Amen. Father, we just want to bow our lives, God, and just yield our vessels to you. Yes, Lord. Yield our thoughts, our cares. Amen. Yield all of our desire and our ambition, Lord. God, you are the Lord and the master of our whole lives. Hallelujah. We just ask, Father, as we bow to you today in humbleness of heart, Lord, and in dire need, Lord God, of your grace in this hour. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So many things happen in Father God, but we look away to Jesus. Yes, Lord. We just ask for your Holy Spirit healing, your Holy Spirit power, right. your Holy Spirit baptism, God, Amen. to visit all of our brothers and sisters, Lord Jesus. You know all about it. You understand, Lord God, what's going on. And we just ask, Father, that you'll rebuke the adversary Praise on our God. behalf. Yes, Lord. Set us free, Lord God, from all the entrapments and the and the strongholds, Father, Amen. and Lord, all the discomfort and the suffering, Lord, and the affliction and all infection and all matter, Lord God, of what's happening, God, Amen. may your name be praised, may Amen. you get glory and honor, Amen. and Lord, may the majesty of your might and your power move deep into every innermost being Amen. and quicken, Lord, with confidence and grace. And bless and overshadow our brother Ed, Lord, coming all this way. Yes, Lord. Lord God, to just share the love of God that should have brought in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Oh, the great encouragement and revelation of your word today, yes, Lord. Father, and may all the meetings up there at Brother Jim Pinkson and Wichita, Kansas, be blessed Amen. and overshadowed by your care and considerations, Lord yes, Jesus. Lord, and Lord God, we take this day along with all the believers of this church and this assembly Amen. and those that are online, Heavenly Father, just please grant your great blessing yes, of visitation. Thank you, oh, Lord Jesus, come by here. Hallelujah. Come by here, Lord God, heal and bless and set free. Amen. Clear our minds of all the clutter of this world yes, and let the heavenly revelations of your goodness, your mercy, and your plan Lord, of redemption you, so Amen. fill and occupy our hearts and minds today. Brandon, Lord. Circumcise us, Lord, and set us free. Amen. And take Brother Ed into your hands, Lord, and just let him be so comfortable and yielded in the liberty of your power. Yes, Lord, in your Jesus. grace, Father, we pray and thank you for your bride marching to the tune of your gospel Amen. today. That true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, Thank the present you, tense reality of a living Christ and a living bride. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Psalm 91. We're going to read a psalm and have one more song. Praise God. Psalm 91, as you're standing, we'll let you be seated here momentarily. Praise God. Let's read Psalm 91. I think that would be a good psalm for our occasion. Amen. Amen. We're promised victory in the name of Jesus, and we expect nothing less. Amen. Amen. Right. Psalm 91 says this. Are you ready? Say amen. amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Amen. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come Amen. nigh thee. Glory. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, <clears throat> which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Amen. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Amen. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my Amen. name. That's right. 
He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God add his blessings to your hearts and lives. Amen. You can be seated. Victory in Jesus. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. I heard an old much amen well amen. praise the lord we've been having some great fellowship amen me and brother ed just really been in the word of god <coughs> loving jesus and just talking and fellowshipping and we're so sorry that uh you know some people are struggling in their physical bodies and overshadowing our meetings like this but god's grace is sufficient for us amen That's right amen praise the lord we're getting brother ed wired up here this thing's pretty Pretty contrary. There you go, my brother. We're hooked in. 
All right. And God bless everybody. Just want to encourage you to open up your hearts. Amen. Just enter right into the word. Here's your bottle of water right here, brother. Yeah. Amen. Well, it's with great privilege we welcome our precious brother Ed Cater from Newfoundland, Canada. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. All right. Appreciate Amen. you, buddy. Amen. Take your liberty, brother. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you this morning as we have entered into the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Amen. Lord. Now, Brother Jeremiah, is this okay? Are we good? Everything's good. All right. Praise the Lord. Can we stand as we... I want to read a couple of portions of Scripture. But the, first of all, I want to uh, get you to turn to Galatians. And we'll read one verse, then we'll pray. Galatians chapter 1. Uh, while I was just back there in the office, I uh, this thought seemed to be strong in my heart, so I'm just going to go as I feel led to go today. That's the only thing I can do. Amen. That's it. Just submit to how the Lord leads us. Hallelujah. So if you're in Galatians 1, let's turn to verse 11 and 12, and I want, as, uh, I want to continue for uh, Brother Jeremiah back there. This will be seeing and hearing. Is Revelation and Understanding Part 2. Amen. 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 Now, I want us to notice the scriptures, and what I'm trying to do is to get you to see yourself Lord, that's it. in this word. Okay, so, so when you read this, this is you. Amen. All right? That's exactly right. It's true. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Mm -hmm. For I neither received it of man, and neither was I taught it at any Bible school. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. Right. Heavenly Father, as we humbly bow before you, Lord, we are trying by your grace today, Lord, to just, Lord, just expound the scriptures, Lord, to exhort, Lord, to try to help the people and edify them, Lord, to build them up in the most holy faith. And, Lord, you know the battle that we're in, Lord, in this spiritual warfare, Lord, against this word. Lord, Brother Bram said, all hell is against this revelation, and truly it is, Lord. So we realize, Lord, that we must put on the armor, buckle up, press in a little harder, not to be deterred, Lord, by any flesh, O oh God, but may the inner man rule and reign and take control. So, Lord, just bless us now as we continue in our thought today. Bless this people, Lord. They're precious to me, part of uh, the body of Christ. And, Lord, we are so thankful for the same words, same revelation Amen. that you're unfolding to each and every member yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, remember those that are sick, Lord, yes, Lord, those that need a touch in their body. Heal them, we pray. Amen. And, Lord... We know that by your word, O oh God, everything, Lord, was created, and Lord, by your word that you sent, you healed them. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'll just increase our faith, Lord, that revelation in our hearts. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. you may be seated. Amen. Now, today, what I want to do to continue with part two uh, on Wednesday, we went into some things, and we kind of jumped in here, we jumped in here, and we kind of brought out a little bit about a rest, a little bit about a light, a little bit about uh, doctrine. So now, today, I want, I want us to notice in our scripture reading that the Apostle Paul is trying to relate to the Galatian church that all that he had done, under Gamaliel and the law, his study. He was a bright man. He knew the law. Uh, he was above his equals, I believe he said, in that respect. But once he met that pillar of fire, that Logos that we talked about Amen. on the road to Damascus, I believe Acts 9, we find that he had a change of heart. He caught a revelation of Jesus, and he right. went down into the desert, he came back after so many years, and Peter and Paul were preaching the same revelation of the Word without knowing each other. That's right. Amen. And so 
What they had then is what we have to have now because Amen. the gospel hasn't changed. Amen. And so Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament practically, and so we find that his writings, although he touched on things, now there is some understanding or there's some notion that Paul really had the full word and Brother Branham preached what Paul preached. Well, that's true. Brother Branham did preach what Paul preached. But Brother uh, but, but Paul never had the insight into the revelation of the sealed book. you got to understand that. And the sealed book was a hidden wisdom. It was the mysteries of God. And this is where the hearing and the seeing comes into play. Because it's the seeing and the hearing of that sealed book that's most important. Amen. Now, can I go to a scripture here just to help to what I'm saying here? Let's, go to, let's go to Romans 16. And let me show you what is happening around our, our uh, message people today. Uh, so we'll back up to Romans 16. We had a little meeting on Friday night with the brothers. I believe I referred to this at the time, but for... I don't know where, where my voice is going today or where the voice of the word is going, but nonetheless, i got to preach what's on my heart. Amen. And I believe that this is where we are, and we, 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 we do understand that we've grown up, amen, from the infancy of the message. A lot of people today, even coming down in the car, myself and Brother Matthew, were talking of third and fourth generation children growing up in the home, growing up in the message, and yet they really don't know who Brother Branham was. Yep. They don't have the insight like us older people do. Uh, I say me. But, uh, but nonetheless, we have to recognize present-day word. That's right. Amen. So can we read verse 25, Romans 16? Now to him that has of power to establish you according to my gospel. Now that's Paul speaking. Yes. And Paul is speaking of what he's preaching, That's right. his gospel. Yep. All right? Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Mm -hmm. So anyone that's bringing a gospel now has to bring the gospel according to the revelation of the mystery. Amen. Doesn't that put you under the seventh exactly. seal? Yes, sir. Doesn't that put you under yes, the third sir. pole? Yes, it does. And anybody that's not preaching according to the revelation of the mystery is not doing the body of Christ in this hour right. any good. Right. Right. Amen. 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 We have to preach what Paul said because why? Preaching this revelation of the mystery establishes you. That's right. Amen. Exactly. A double Yes, you know, sir. he's unstable in his ways, a yes, double-minded man. But a man that got the revelation, he's established. That's right. You Amen. see, it's like the covenant. You know, Paul wrote in Hebrews, you know, how they were under the blood of bulls and goats, but he took away the first to establish the second. Right. But, the est but the second never got established until you get over to Peter's writings, and Peter says there will be an entrance Amen. into, the, into yes. the kingdom, yes. open to you as Malachi 4, and establish you in the present truth. Amen. Isn't that the same as this? Amen. Isn't this the present truth? Yes, Amen. So really, the second covenant is established in the heart of the believer in the end time. The covenant over the cloud, the rainbow, right. that's the agreement of the word to God and his people right. uniting. Amen. So that's the covenant that we must be under now. Exactly. So that's the opening of the seventh seal and all of the mysteries. Amen. And that's why the ministry come and they feed a little bit here, a little bit there. Right. And that's how you're, you're growing. Yep. Amen. Amen. Now, just look at a counteract to that when you cross back over to verse 17 of Romans 16. Getting back to where we touched on Wednesday night. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words, fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Right. Amen. And here's where you find in this hour that right. fine edge, right. that razor edge Amen. that Brother Bram talked about. Exactly. Amen. So we've got to find ourselves in the Scriptures as individuals. Amen. Praise God. Right. I'm so thankful today for the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Now, on Wednesday night, we looked at a couple of things here, and uh, one of them was the mysteries. And if we were to look into Matthew 13, you will find that...
that the mysteries of God is what Jesus was talking about when he talked about blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears that Amen. they hear. Right. He wasn't talking about anything else but the mysteries of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. And he said blessed are your eyes if you see them. Yeah. Amen. Some people say, well, the mysteries, that was for Brother Bannon. We don't need to go into that. That's the whole key of the, of the relationship with God. That's right. Amen. That's, that's, right. that's what Paul is talking about here. We have to enter in to this word. Amen. Amen. So we find that that's true. So in Matthew uh, 13, I'm just going to read a couple of, couple of verses here, maybe just one. And that would be uh, Matthew 13, and I just referred to verse 16. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, their ears, for they hear. If you come over to verse 23, he that receives seed into good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. Amen. Amen. Now there you go. So that's, that's why I'm preaching on seeing and hearing is revelation and understanding. Amen. Right. Because that's exactly what the parable was. Right. He that receives seed into good ground, in his heart is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. Amen. And people say, you don't need to understand these things. Oh, oh yeah, yes, we do need to understand these things. God meant for us to understand these things. Amen. Amen. So we're so thankful for these things. Now, I want to go to the church age book here this morning because, like I said, I want to kind of just establish some of the things that we've been ministering on and see, well, did Brother Brown talk about that? Yeah, he sure did. Now, on page 13 of the church age book, you forgive me, brothers. You see me up here with, with this book all taped up and everything like that? That's because it's been used for a while. Amen. Praise God. But it says the importance. I'm on page 13 if you're taking notes or, or noting things down. He said the importance of Revelation, paragraph 4, by the Spirit to a true believer can never be overemphasized. Revelation means more to you than perhaps you realize. Now, I'm not talking about this book of Revelation in the back of the Bible. Right. No, no, no. He right. said, I'm talking about all Revelation. Amen. It, is the, it is tremendously important to the church. Now, why would the prophet say that if it wasn't important? That's right, right, brother. right? Amen. why would he say that if it wasn't important? Amen. Until God reveals to you that Jesus is the anointed word, that Jesus is the Christ, and that it is the blood that cleanses you, and that God is your Savior, you will never have eternal life. It is the spiritual revelation that does that. Amen. See? Amen. People are believing on, I hope so, well, I made a confession too, but it's got to become a real revelation to you in your heart that Amen. your sins are forgiven. Right. The Holy Ghost sends back the witness, Hebrews right. 10, Amen. Amen, and he establishes the covenant, the word, yes. in the fleshly tables of the heart. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. But it was a spiritual kingdom that he was going to build because Jehovah's Witness, for instance, they go around talking about the kingdom of God yeah. with the kingdom hall. Well, Brother Brown said they've missed it because it's like Israel. There's two things, amen, that are most significant in the time of Jesus Christ. Number one, his death, vital, had to take place. Number two, what was, what was the... What were they looking for and still today and announcing? Is it, are you coming now to restore the kingdom? All right, right. That's what they always look for. Right. right up till now, out in the church world this morning, yep. right? They're looking right. for the coming of the Lord. They're preaching. They're talking about it. Right. We're living in the fulfilling of it. Hallelujah. Because right. Brother Branham said he's building a spiritual kingdom. Amen. 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 Right. It's not a literal kingdom. <laughs> it's a spiritual kingdom in the heart of the bride. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, he knows, on page 15, he knows, that's Satan, that if the people can get the true revelation of the true church, what she is, what she stands for, and that she can do the greater works, she will be an invincible army. If they get a true revelation of the two spirits within the framework, here you go, two spirits so close, Matthew 24, 24, if they get a true revelation of the two spirits within the framework of the Christian church and by God's spirit discerning and withstand the, discern and withstand the Antichrist spirit, Satan will be powerless before her. Amen. Have not we arrived in Hebrews 5 that we've matured, that we can discern good and evil? Amen. I think the church is really growing in the headstone. 
And brothers, sisters, up to you as an individual to make sure that you are in the revelation of the word. Amen. Yes, that God vindicates that he has accepted you. Amen. Yes. Praise Amen. the Lord. So Amen. Satan hates revelation, but we love it. The true revelation in our lives, the gates of hell cannot prevail against us, but we will prevail over them. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is going to be the operation of the Holy Ghost. That means that the book can't be revealed to anyone but a special class of people. Hallelujah. Now Brother Branham is segregating us. <laughs> I'm just using that word, but he's trying to make a definite identification that there's a special class of people that this happens to, and them only. And when you're in that class, you say, hey, you're my brother. You're, you're part of the class. We're graduating the same time. Amen. Into another realm, another dimension. Praise God. Yes, sir, it can't be real. Uh, revealed to anyone but a special class of people. It will take one with prophetic insight. Amen. Doesn't that put the Amen. church under the same headship of yes, message, sir. testimony of Jesus, yes. the spirit of prophecy? Right. Amen. Right. It will require the ability to hear from God. Right. Amen. It will require supernatural instruction, not just a student comparing verses. Right. Though that is good, but a mystery requires the teaching of the Spirit or it never becomes clear. Not preaching. No, it requires the teaching of the Spirit to make it clear. Why? You're putting it back in the Scripture. Amen. How we need to hear from God and lay ourselves open and become yielded to the Spirit to hear and know. Now, as I've said already, it is the revelation of God that will give you authority over the devil. Right. Amen. And you can see why they who would add or take away from it would be cursed. It would have to be so, for who can add or take away from the perfect revelation of God Amen. and overcome the enemy? That's it is right. that simple. Amen. Amen. The time is at hand. What does that mean? The time was not at hand previously. That's right. In the wisdom of an economy of God, this mighty revelation, though fully known to God, could not come forth hitherto. Thus we immediately learn a principle. The revelation of God for each age can come in that age only and at a specific time. Amen. That's so important That's right. because we're not living now in the age of Luther, Wesley, Pentecost, and even the early parts of the message. Right. We're not living those days. Nope. We have moved up into the age at a specific time and, and its season. Oh, this is the age of Christ in the bride. Right. Amen. She has, he has united with her. Look at the history of Israel. The revelation of God to Moses came only at a specific time of history. And even more specifically, it came as the people cried unto God. Ha ha, that's a key. Are those that are hungering and thirsting for righteousness, they shall be filled. And that's the one get it. That's the ones that are concerned about it. Right. They're just not floating around, hope I'm in the bride. When it happens, well, I hope I'll be there. Amen. No, sir. No, there's something within the bride that presses and pushes. Right. Amen. And what, they, they, they want to get into the revelation of the Word. Yes, Amen. 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 He being the complete revelation of the Godhead. And in this age, Laodicea, the revelation of God will come in its due time. It will not falter, neither will it be premature. Amen. Think on this and heed it well. That's right. For we are in the end time today. Glory to God. Amen. Now, that should establish anybody out there online, even this morning. May God bless them. But that shows you Brother Branham was not a, against the revelation, but he was trying to tell you that you have to have the revelation. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let's go to, uh, let's go to, 2 Corinthians 3, we can. <coughs> Excuse me. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 and 3. Second Corinthians 3, 2 and 3. Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, 
not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Amen. All right? So the bride now has become the epistle as read and known of all men. As I preached on Wednesday night, your spoken word is your identification. What you speak identifies who you are, where you are in the message. And Paul says here, we are manifestly declared. Right. It's not a hidden thing. Amen. It's not, a, it's not a, a, under, you know, we're a light. We're set on a hill. We're not Amen. shuffed under a bushel. Right. Amen. We're yeah. brightly shining the gospel Amen. of the revelation of the mystery right. of Jesus Christ, which is the gospel for this hour. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If we could just keep moving here in, in 2 Corinthians 3, go to 13, if you would. Amen. One lady's scriptures in there. <clears throat> and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day with Israel remained at the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Amen. You know, they keep reading that scroll, reading that scroll, going to the wall, going to the wall, but the veil is still there. Right. Amen. And it won't be taken away until... Amen. There's coming a time in which this will become a manifestation of done away law and will be done away in Christ. Praise That's God. what the scripture says. Amen. Which veil will be done away in Christ. Amen. Verse 14. Right. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. How many, how many people today that read the prophet's message and hear them and the veil is on their heart? Right. That's right. Think of that. Yep. This is a very, very, very few people that really are entering into more and more of the Word. Wow. And I've been noticing lately, within the last two or three days, there are certain ministries now that are becoming concerned about their people. Why? They're beginning to realize, you know, there's something missing here. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what it is. It's the teaching right. of the revelation right. of the Word yes. in the capstone, which right. is the adoption, right. which is the teaching age right. that's making the bride, preparing the bride right. by the Scriptures, right. that she sees herself in the Word. Hallelujah. That word is growing in her and forming. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's just wonderful. So as we read, let's just read on. We'll see if that is so. Verse 17, now the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face beholding us in the glass, we're looking at the glory of the Lord and we're being changed from the, for, uh, into the same image right. as we go from glory to glory right. even as by the right. Spirit of the Lord. I know we go from glory to glory in Revelation, but we're going from glory of earthly to glory of heavenly. Amen. 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 Philippians says we are, we'll be, our vile bodies will be changed Amen. and have one like his own glorious That's body. Right. Here's your glory to glory. Amen. Amen. Right. This is one glory. That's right. You know, even Moses, that was one glory, and that had to be done away with. That took it flesh. Exactly. Amen? Exactly. But this wonderful glory that we see, we're being changed. Amen. You can see it, Amen. that the Word has to be in your heart to change you, right. to do those things. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're so thankful for that. Yes. Amen. So we have a perfect sacrifice. Now, down in Hebrews, we find that uh, we're not going to look at that today. We're just going to move along now. Just to save a little bit of time, I just want to look, amen, where the Scripture takes the true revelation and the true believer in this hour. So we're in Corinthians, so we're going to move to 1 Corinthians 13, if we can do that. So we just back up a small bit, and we look in chapter uh, 13. Now this is a teaching, uh, I, I kind of have a tendency to, to read a lot of Scriptures and teach the things because I want people to see the Word, right. amen, because if they can see themselves in these Scriptures, amen, Hey, that's what they got to do, find themselves in the Scriptures. You realize that if they come and take your Bible and take the message books, close the church, shut everything down, you know where your Word's got to be, you know where, where the Holy Ghost has got to be, where the Word has got to be, has got to be in here. Amen. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians 13, 9, very familiar, we know in part, prophesy in part. When that which is perfect, verse 10, is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Not that it's just taken... And, and thrown out, no. Paul is saying, that which, is, uh, uh, which comes, which is perfect, then that which is in part shall be done away. In other words, it'll be swallowed up in the whole. Hallelujah. Amen. Not just thrown away. All the parts will, be, will become the fullness of it all. That's right. Amen. When I was a child, now, now watch the scriptures. Yeah. When I was a child, I speak as a child, I did what? Understood. I only understood as a child. Yeah. You talk about understanding. Right. Yeah, he said I was a child, so I didn't understand anything. 
Is that right? Yes, sir. I thought I was a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. And when I put away childish things, I begin to understand. Right, exactly. Amen. Right. For now we see through a, dark, a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Do you know the church have, have reached that fulfillment? We know, amen, him face to face, amen. looking in the mirror of the word. That's right. And now we know what he thinks of us. We are known as we shall be known. Yes, sir. That's He's right. seen us from the foundation That's of the right. world. But here's the thing. Paul said, ye are manifestly declared Declare. now. Amen. You see the That's difference? Right. There was a time when that couldn't happen. Exactly. But according to Paul's gospel, we had to come to this. That's right. Luther yes. never had the mystery of the revelation no, of sir. Jesus Christ. No, Not the way that it's unfolded now. Because no, you've got to understand what is it? Jesus Christ comes down and silently, seventh seal, on breaks, and reveals hidden mysteries. Amen. That's it. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he no. didn't go to all the people around that he did. All he went was to his disciples. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. And that's where the message is pointed to, Amen. just the very elect in this hour. Right. And if anybody is outside of the revelation of the word in this hour, if they should happen by the grace of God to come into the, the grace of God, then they will come right into this message. Amen. They will Amen. they will not get saved under Amen. a denominational no. system. No way. No, if they're seed, they're coming right in. Exactly right. And maybe it's over. Who knows, brother, sister? Who knows? Maybe it's over. I don't know. Right. We just, brother, I'm, brother Ram said, when the last one comes in, she's gone. Right. But you must remember that, uh, Noah, as I always say, Noah closed the door. God closed the door and Noah was inside. That's right. Yeah. Can't open it. No, no. no no, from the outside nor the inside. No, nope, that's exactly right. Amen. Amen. So God closed the door. Not man, God. God, right. God shut the door. Amen. Now, uh, all right, let's go to 2 Corinthians 3. We're moving along. That's good. So you see all these little scriptures now. You tie them into your, into your thought here. So in 2 Corinthians 3, now we want to move down to verse uh, 16, which I've ever, I already showed you that veil taken away. Amen? Amen right. So we see uh, that that links us into now Hebrews 5 and Hebrews 6. So maybe we'll keep moving into Hebrews 6. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Right. Hebrews 6. So Hebrews 5, 14 shows us where the strong meat belongs. Yep. Who's eating strong meat? Those that have grown up. Wean from the milk. Amen. Amen. Those that he can teach knowledge and doctrines. Right? right. Remember I once in another preached on doctrine, how it's the third pole? Yep. Brother Bram put the, uh, the paper uh, leaflet of his Bible into the corner of the tabernacle. Yep. Remember that? Amen. And the angel told him, he said, you go and preach the word in the season, out, do the work from the evangelist. The time will come. Yes. And the time has now been here. That, right. pr that, that word is fulfilled. That's Right? That's right? They will not endure sound doctrine. We yeah. just read it here in yeah. Romans 16. Romans 16, 17. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mark them that cause division against this revelation. Yeah, yeah it's a serious matter, brother, sister. Right. Not against individuals or ministries or people. But you have to find yourself, you and God alone. It's an individual affair. Amen? Amen? That's right. All right, Hebrews 6. Now watch. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Yeah. All right? So there are principles, but Paul is telling us, let's, let's leave it. Where's he leading us to? Amen. Right? He's, he's leading us from the basics that you have to go through. Yeah. Justification, sanctification, baptism, yeah. the Holy Ghost. Right? Being Amen. baptized correctly and all these things. Let's leave those principles. That is doctrine. That's right. right? But he said, we got to go on. Amen. we got to complete the picture. Hallelujah. Amen? Yes, Perfection is completeness. Yes. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let's go on to perfection, yes. not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Amen. You talk about people always coming to the altar, always trying to get saved. Never, it doesn't seem to reach the, the, the level of peace in their heart. Yep. If God should come today, are you ready to roll? Are you ready to go? Right. Amen. You Amen. know? That's right. I mean... People just go day to day, and they just think, yeah, well, it's a, just another day. Listen, brother, sister, one of these days, it's going to happen. That's right. That's right. 
Right. The change is going to take place. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I was just listening last night, I believe, to a brother that was talking about people think, oh, when the squeeze comes, you know, they'll probably wake up a little bit and say, you know, things are getting tight, boy, to come. You know what? The brother said it's too late. And I believe it's quoting Brother Branham, it'll be too late. Yeah, because right. you've got to realize God sends a strong delusion that's right. that they believe the lie. That's right. Because they rejected the truth. Very serious, very serious. Of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead. And this will we do if God permit, yes. So that's very important. Now, on Wednesday I spoke concerning the created spoken word and I talked about the fivefold ministry, is that right? Can we go in our Bible to Matthew 5? Matthew 5. I want to back up here just for a moment because I didn't get the scripture in and I, I, I'm very, I'm the type, I'd like to get the scriptures in so that you can see that it's written in the scriptures what we're talking about. All right, so Matthew 5 and I believe it's verse 18. Matthew 5 and verse 18. That's right. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Amen. So that apostrophe after pastors in Ephesians 4 on Wednesday night, right. that jot and tittle missing was meant to be missing. Right. And those jots and, t and, and tittles, that was between Isaiah 61 Right? Amen. Preached yeah. preach the year of Jubilee and Amen. so on. Then the day of vengeance. That jot and tittle meant something. Right, brother? Exactly right. And that's why in pastors and teachers of Ephesians 4, there's neither one there because it's a continuation of preach the word and teach it now. Amen. Right. Now, I don't want anyone to misunderstand the fivefold ministry because God laid it in the church. And as far as I'm concerned, it started in the early church and is still. It's still a ministry today, but it's a ministry specifically for certain things. For instance, the apostles, they don't go around starting churches where churches are already going. That church is established. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. An apostle is like, I believe Brother Bram said, a missionary. So they'll go overseas. They'll go into the jungles. They'll go into the deep parts around the world, different languages where the gospel has never been, and they'll go and present and do missionary work. Right? right? Then you've got the prophets who's, who has a specific, to whom the word of God comes, that has that specific ministry. But we know Malachi 4 has come, so that's over as far as we're concerned right. as the bride in the Western uh, Hemisphere. Isn't that right? That's right? There may be some minor prophets, but that's fine. They won't contradict what the prophet of Malachi 4 right. spoke or, ta right. or taught. Then you have the evangelists. Like I said, Brother Ram said, he goes out and he... He, he tries to get the sinner under conviction, fire and brimstone, and get him to the altar and get him saved, get him into the, into the outer court, amen, under the laver and the sacrifice. All oh, that's good. And then you come to the pastors that, uh, that, that teach their flocks that are being established, and now they are into a teaching mode. So they're just not going and visiting uh, the sick in the hospital, and they're baptizing the babies and dedicating them, we should say. And they're just not doing that. They're doing their pastoral duty. But now his duty in this hour is a teaching of the word. That's right. Right? Amen. Now, number five is the teacher. So there is a teaching aspect of ministry within the body. Amen. But you've got to discern right, right from wrong, good from evil. That's it. All right? So I want to make that specific that there are five, five, four, five pieces to the fivefold ministry. All right? Now, we know in the early church and the early ride of the white horse, the first seal rider, that was an antichrist spirit. We referred to that. Now, I want us to, to go to Colossians now. And I want to read from Colossians chapter 2. I believe we'll go to chapter 2 first. Remember on Wednesday night, I wrote on the board concerning, uh, Elohim. yes, sir, concerning the Godhead. 
bed. Right? All right. That'll suffice. <clears throat> Are you in Colossians 2? Amen. Who's the group of people he's talking to? For I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at the Laodicean age. Yes. Is that right? Right. It's the group of the Laodicean spirit. Yep. It's the group of the Laodicean age. Paul's got a conflict going on. For as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in all love. Now watch the scriptures, and unto all the riches of the full assurance of understanding. Amen. Well, what about that to the Laodicean dispensation? <laughs> Amen. You try to tell me we don't need to know these things. Right. This is the message, my brother or sister. Amen. This is what's failed to be preached by a lot of ministries. Amen. That's why the people are hungry. They're starving. That's right. Because they cannot identify, where am I in the message? My, my. Exactly. But the individual has to find himself in the That's message. That's right. That's the word. Now watch. That their hearts might be knit together. And I am to all riches of the foolish, uh, full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery. Amen. What are those people going to do? Amen. They can't acknowledge the mystery, Amen. right? They just can't acknowledge the mystery of God, of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures Amen. of wisdom and knowledge. Right. How are you going to bypass that in the hour in which we live? Exactly. You cannot bypass that. Right, I hope you catch my point today, brother, That's sister. Good. This is really serious business we're right. into now. You know. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, now. I want to back up here. Colossians 1. Can we go to Colossians 1? Amen. Praise the Lord. 25. Wherefore I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid yes. from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, Amen. to whom... God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. Yeah. It's so plain. Yeah. It's so plain for the believer right. to have access right. this of this mystery among the Gentiles, yeah. which is Christ in you, Amen. the hope of glory, right. whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man yeah. in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Amen. How do you go on to that perfection that yep. Paul spoke of in Hebrews 6 unless you've got this mystery, Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I just think these things are wonderful, brother, Amen. sister. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Beautiful. All right. Now we're going to go back to Ephesians. Because I remember on Wednesday night I said Colossians is the head and Ephesians is the, is the body of the church. Uh, yeah. Amen. Now if we go back to the body part. Let's look at Ephesians here, chapter 1. Now just notice, Paul, because Paul wrote all these, all these uh, books in the Bible. In Ephesians 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, yeah. according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. Amen. Having predestinated us, oh, uh, I'm sorry, without, that we should be, holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto, all, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. That's right. So we find here that Paul is showing here how we're blessed in heavenly places. Right. So we must be risen up, correct? That's right. Now in verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Is that right? That's right. Amen. So how can people say it's not important? Ah, no. According to the good pleasure of, of which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, Hallelujah. he may gather together all things in Christ, oh, amen. which are in heaven and which are Hallelujah. in earth, Beautiful. even in him. 